talk because you were here last summer um, and yeah. coming out of the first lockdown um, and you had a newborn baby of a company. At that yes, time. I did. Um, so now are we saying it's a it's a toddler now, your company? Yeah, it's, um, it's <laughs> still a delinquent nonetheless. But, <laughs> but no, it's, how, it's, is it, how is it going? Tw well, we're about 12, 18 months in now. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah, so those first 12 months were actually really, really hard. Um, and actually, it turned out that what I thought was going to be really easy was was really difficult. Uh, and yeah. the stuff that I thought was going to be really hard was really easy. So getting the business set up and the administrative tasks, yeah. all that kind of stuff, piece of cake, yeah. getting customers. Wow, that was, uh, <laughs> that was no mean feat. So it's interesting. I've literally done our, a meeting today with my accountant signing off on last year's accounts. Yeah. Um, and we've done kind of more business in the last month than we did the entirety of last year. So really? yeah, finally wow. that, that kind of growth that I was discussing last year and, and yeah. hunting for has started to come to, to fruition, which is really, really cool. That's good. Yeah, that's good. And is there anything that you wish you had known last year? Obviously, like you could never have foreseen the pandemic, but just in terms of kind of your learning curve and everything you've learned along the way, is there anything you wish you would have known on the first day of you setting up that business? Yeah, I think it would have been better if we had a clearer picture of what it is we wanted to do. Um, okay. as, as most businesses that start off, I think we've evolved and we've actually ended up offering a, a different set of services than I suspected yeah. we were right at the beginning. Uh, I was you know, of the mind that we were going to go into the realms of software development and the likes. And actually, uh, the managed service industry that I came from was far more appropriate to the type yeah. of business I wanted to run. And, and that's kind of naturally led, led its course. But I think you have to go down these paths to understand what it is that you, oh, you, you know, you're best at. So and you have to adapt and, and continue to evolve in that vein. And I think we've been fortunate because we were, you know, a startup and small. Yeah. We've been able to adapt to, to what people are looking for. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah cloud massive growth in cloud computing yeah that's what people are kind of calling out for and it aligns perfectly with what we can do and the services that we can offer so yeah. we've been quite fortunate really yeah i think to be honest we're the same like obviously we're probably maybe classed as a startup still we've been running for like six years yeah but we have changed so much and like that won't be the last time you change like we thought right we're sorted now this is what we're going forward with and then just you know the pandemic hit and we were like right we need to sort of change our business model and it's it's interesting but the good thing is when it is a startup and it's a smaller company you can do that like yeah. you're a lot more agile it's more interesting and yeah I mean it's a long road but it's yeah. a fun one really isn't it <laughs> yeah it is so it's a lot of fun and we've met some well I've met some brilliant people along the yeah. way um, and we've got some really good clients now and we found that one of the bits that I thought when I started was that actually you spend loads of money on marketing and people will come to you. And it's not the case at all. Yeah, no. It's a complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's literally, it's all word of mouth uh, yeah. and all of the yeah, stuff that we've done is relationship-based, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and that old story of, you know, treat a customer well, they'll tell one person, treat yeah. a customer bad, they'll tell free, it yeah. rings true completely. So it's yeah. taken us so long to build up a network of, you know, of clients that are happy with our services through that, that, that kind of natural uh, yeah. word of mouth. But it's a slow process, really, really slow process. Yeah. Do you think it's been a slower process because of the pandemic as well? Because I feel like we've really missed out on those like face to face networking events, those meetings. And like, although it's, it's still really easy to network now, I just feel like sometimes those face to face ones are just a bit more kind of, you know, you put you kind of build that relationship a little bit quicker. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, um, to the type of communication that we're doing today, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant that we haven't had to, to drive anywhere. Yeah, we're, exactly, you know, we're online, yeah. we're active in seconds, which is fantastic. But what you don't have is that that personal kind of communication, yeah, the type exactly. of communication that you have in and out of a meeting, you know, yeah. kind of what did you do on the weekend? What have you been yeah. up to? That, that kind of interpersonal communication isn't there. No. And I think that that's actually really business, uh, really important from a business perspective, um, because that's how you build a good relationship with your clients and vice versa. Okay. So yeah, I, I would agree. I, I, I think that these, these communication tools are fantastic, but as soon as we can get back to face to face, yeah. I, you know, I was out in the car. I was like, you know, I don't care. You're in <laughs> Scotland. I'll drive. Yeah, I just yes, want to see people. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And obviously, like you, you said that you've changed the way the business is and and your services. But did you set a big goal at the start, thinking right, I want to achieve this in five years, or did you start a small one and then move the goal post every time you achieved it? How have you sort of gone about it in your own head? Yeah, I made the classic mistake of all people that set up business. And I thought that the first year we'd take over the world and that everyone would want services from us and that we'd be uber successful um, and actually start to realize. That happens in a second. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's it. So actually, that's just not the way these things yeah. work. My financial <laughs> forecasts were absolutely ridiculous when I look back at them now. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think you have to have that level of kind of self confidence to be able to be stupid enough to actually set yeah. your own business up in the first place. Um, <laughs> and that self assurance, you know, that self confidence is what's got us to where we are today. Um, but you, we went through with my accountants today, and it was just like what we'd forecasted versus what we did yeah, was just so it was comical. It was absolutely yeah. comical. Yeah. Um, but we're now, like I say, uh, but the growth that we've got now, um, we're into a really good place and we've reinvented ourselves. And we just work completely differently. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. You know, we're involved in loads of stuff now. That I didn't think we'd even be interested in. And actually, yeah. it's turned out to be really good for our customers. We really enjoy doing it uh, and there's money to be made in it. So it's, it's a win, yeah. win win all around. Yeah, bluffing happens for a reason, doesn't it? And I suppose you've made the best out of a completely awful situation in your <laughs> third year. Yeah. Um, but are you are you using that first year as like something to compare or are you just going to not dismiss it, but just not really take that as, you know, something to have that? Yeah, that? so I, I, I would say, yeah, from in terms of a growth perspective, yeah, agreed. I think your second year is probably the one that you start as your baseline. Um, but there was a lot of important lessons that were learned yeah. in the first year that I think have set us up for, you know, a much better second year. Yeah. Um, so you, you've got to go through it, haven't you? And absolutely. But I think that also there's, it's an important part. If you've set your, if you've set a business up, there's a lot of learning you do as an individual. Yeah. You can, you know, you can be a director in a business for, for, all, inve- yeah, for all intents and purposes, but when it's your own business, yeah. it's actually a lot of the stuff you've learned is completely different. Um, so I think that was the big eye opener to me. I was like, oh, I know how to do all this. I've watched other people do it. I've sat next to CEOs and the likes. I know exactly how to run a business. By like month two, I was like, I haven't got a Scooby. This I'm, I'm learning it. Everything I'm learning is new. <laughs> honest that like almost naivety might be quite helpful though because you sort of yeah. just jump into it rather than like being so cautious of things yeah um so like maybe your second year because you're like more aware you know you might not actually take as many risks or things like that so I think sometimes like you know ignorance is bliss really it <laughs> is yeah it is it is uh, you know it was that confidence where I was just picking the phone up and calling yeah. anyone yeah. You know, and I'll talk to it and, and nine times out of ten as you know if you cold call you're not going to get anywhere okay, yeah. But my my kind of um, my my get up and go to just do it again and again and again and again yeah. in the first year. It's not something I would do now. You know, I absolutely yeah. I know that I need to cold call every now and then. But nine times out of ten, it's it, you know it's, it's clients that I've worked with, so I've got a relationship. Yeah. But first year, I'm just amazed the amount of people I managed to put <laughs> another conversation with. Looking back on it, yeah. To be honest, I think people were actually really keen to just have conversations last year. Like I found. Yeah. Even if it wasn't about business, people would be like, let's just talk for something to do. Like, <laughs> that's how I felt anyway. Um, but obviously this whole Epic Talks is um, inspired by the extraordinary people inspiring change in the industry. And I feel like last time we didn't ask you this. Um, so I'm gonna ask it this time, but who has been an extraordinary person in your life to have helped inspire change? Ooh, it's a bit of a tricky one, really. Um, so, I think uh, probably one of the, one of the key people behind making me the way that I am today and going into business was probably my dad. Um, so my my old man used to he used to be a managing director at Pepsi. Um, oh, so his wow. kind of yeah his kind of background was he used to do all the bottling plants. So he designed a bottling yeah. plant and he worked his way up from an engineer to uh, kind of managing director. I think and he did like APAC uh, in the end. Um, and so I've had that that drive from my father the whole yeah. time. But what's really interesting, my my dad's kind of biggest downfall, one of what he considers his biggest downfall, was that he never set up his own business. So wow, it's been okay. dr- yeah. So he's drummed yeah. into me as I've grown up. You need yeah. to set your own business up. You need to set your own business up. Um, and for the best intents, I ignored it and was like, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you yeah. never did it. You've got no idea. Um, and it was really interesting, probably not um, this Christmas, the Christmas before. I went out for a couple of beers with my dad on, on Christmas Eve. And yeah. he told me at that particular point in time, to make or break, you know, you're going to be 30 this year. If you don't do it now, you'll never do it. Um, and I said to him, Dad, this is, you know, it's mad. I've got a really decent job. I'm really happy with what I'm doing. Um, but he, he kind of, he, he went down the thing to force me. <laughs> and well, you know what? To blame when yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's my get out of jail free <laughs> yeah. card. You know, I'll yeah. like, go out and blame my dad. Um, but that was, that was the driving force. And, and kind of behind that, I agree, it was probably the right thing to do. And I thoroughly enjoy what I do now, um, much more than I've ever enjoyed any, you know, working for someone in the past. Yeah. Um, but it was that, that kind of, you know, that thing. And, and he, there's a lot of, important you know important lessons that i've learned from him um, yeah. but ultimately it was a territory that you know not even not even my old man knew much about yeah, he's never run his own business. Yeah, as well. so yeah, yeah that, that's probably that's probably where that's the driving force behind all this and probably the person that inspired the change if you will yeah. 
Oh, good. Okay. And if you weren't in this industry, what other industry would you do you think you'd be working in or what other job? Yeah. So actually, this is a really interesting one. Um, I suspect, as mad as it sounds, I'd probably be a mechanic uh, really? and I'd probably work on cars. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a real oh fun... Yeah, so I've got a real fun passion of, of working on cars and, and the likes. And yeah. I've got um, in the garage, I've got all the tools and stuff like that. And so I'll, you know, spend countless hours yeah. working on my own car. Um, and I think, yeah, probably if I wasn't in IT, I, I don't think I'd be doing very well, but I'd be thoroughly enjoying myself in a garage, you know, bodging people's cars together. Yeah. <laughs>